that their marshal you've been firing out there ain't nothing but a pigeon foot of Chiricahua. Yeah. The Rifleman is a classic American Western television series that aired from 1958 to 1963. It starred Chuck Connors as Lucas McCain and Johnny Crawford as his son Mark McCain and was set in the fictional town of North Fork. The show was filmed in black and white and consisted of half-hour episodes. The Rifleman was popular during its time and is still enjoyed by many today thanks to its compelling storylines and memorable characters. Set in the Old West, the series showcases the daily lives and challenges of the McCains as they navigate through a world filled with danger and adventure. The Rifleman is a timeless show that continues to captivate audiences with its unique blend of action, drama, and family values. It's all the word a body needs. So much for bringing her home. Out. I thank you for bringing her, Lucas. The Rifleman was created by Arnold Levine and developed by Sam Peckinpah. Peckinpah played a significant role in the development of the show, writing and directing many of the earlier episodes. He based many characters and plots on his own childhood experiences which gave the show a unique sense of realism and complexity. This approach, however, eventually led to conflicts with the show's producers. Peckinpah's emphasis on violent realism and character development was at odds with the producer's desire for a more formulaic and action-oriented show. Despite these conflicts, The Rifleman became a classic of early television, known for its compelling characters and thought-provoking stories. Peckinpah's influence can be seen in the show's central character, Lucas McCain, played by Chuck Connors. McCain is a widowed veteran and single father who moves to North Fork, New Mexico to start a new life. He is a skilled marksman, and the rifle he carries becomes a symbol of his strength and determination. However, McCain is not just a gunfighter. He is also a thoughtful and compassionate father who struggles to balance his desire to protect his son with his need to uphold his personal code of honor. This complexity made McCain a relatable and enduring character and Connor's portrayal earned him widespread acclaim. In addition to its compelling characters, The Rifleman was also known for its high production values. The show's western setting was beautifully realized, with sweeping vistas and detailed sets that brought the town of North Fork to life. The action scenes were expertly choreographed, with a focus on realism and tension that set the show apart from its contemporaries. In conclusion, The Rifleman was a groundbreaking television series created by Arnold Levine, and developed by Sam Peckinpah. With its complex characters, thought-provoking stories, and high production values, the show became a classic of early television and a testament to Peckinpah's storytelling prowess. Belong to you. Well, the way I look at it, it's as good as mine right now. <laughs> Have a board, sir. The Rifleman, a popular TV series that premiered in 1958, gained its fame during the height of Western's popularity. Sam Peckinpah, the show's original director, left due to disagreements over his approach, creating another short-lived series called The Westerner with Brian Keith. Despite Peckinpah's departure, The Rifleman continued to distinguish itself from other westerns. Producers of The Rifleman sought unique gimmicks to set it apart, one of which was a modified Winchester Model 1892 rifle with a large ring lever. This rifle became an essential prop for the show's protagonist, Lucas McCain, portrayed by Chuck Connors, the rifle, with its distinctive lever, was not only visually appealing but also emphasized the character's skill and precision. The Rifleman's popularity was a testament to the enduring appeal of westerns during the late 1950s and early 1960s. Despite the numerous westerns airing during this time, The Rifleman stood out, captivating audiences with its unique elements and engaging storylines. The show's success can be attributed to its ability to resonate with viewers and leave a lasting impact on the genre. Even today, this classic western remains a beloved piece of television history. The Winchester Model 1892 rifle is the centerpiece of the classic TV series The Rifleman. This rifleman, carried by the main character Lucas McCain, is a lever-action firearm that allowed for quick firing. The design of the gun was such that McCain could spin it around his hand to fire, making it an effective tool for the character's defense. The rifle appeared in every episode of the show, but it wasn't always fired. In fact, McCain often tried to solve problems without resorting to violence. However, over the course of the show's five-year run, it is estimated that McCain killed around 120 villains with the rifle. The rifle became an iconic symbol of the show, 
and played a significant role in the character development of McCain. Despite the frequent use of the rifle in the series, the show was not solely about violence. Instead, it explored themes of morality, responsibility, and the complexities of frontier life. The rifle's design and the way it was used in the show became a defining characteristic of the rifleman. It was a tool that McCain used to protect himself and those around him, but it was also a symbol of the challenges and dangers of life in the American West. The rifle's presence in every episode served as a reminder of the constant threats that McCain faced and the skills he needed to survive. In summary, the Winchester Model 1892 rifle was a crucial element of the rifleman, serving as both a practical tool and a symbolic representation of the show's themes. Its lever design and frequent use in the series made it an iconic symbol of the show and a defining characteristic of the main character, Lucas McCain. In the 1958 TV series, The Rifleman, the main character, Lucas McCain, was known for his exceptional weaponry skills. Notably, McCain never carried a pistol, despite his proficiency with one. Instead, he relied on his trusty rifle, a modified model 1892 Winchester, which was specially adapted for the show's filming. James S. Stembridge, a skilled gunsmith, was responsible for modifying two model 1892s for the close-up and regular filming of the series. Stembridge's expertise in firearms was not limited to his work on the rifleman. He later opened a retail store called Stembridge Gun Rentals, which became a significant supplier of prop guns to Hollywood. In the opening sequence of The Rifleman, McCain demonstrates his remarkable accuracy with the rifle, firing 12 shots in quick succession. The first seven shots are seen in a close-up view, while the remaining five are shown in another angle. This impressive display of marksmanship is a testament to McCain's skills and the careful craftsmanship of Stembridge's modified firearms. In summary, the Rifleman showcased the weaponry skills of its main character, Lucas McCain, who never carried a pistol. The rifle used in the series was a modified Model 1892, the work of gunsmith James S. Stembridge. Stembridge's contributions to the film industry went beyond the Rifleman, as he later established a retail store that supplied prop guns to many Hollywood productions. He must go along those mountains, then around and over into Arizona. The popular 1958 television series, The Rifleman, is beloved by many, but it does have its share of historical inaccuracies. One such inaccuracy lies in the gun carried by the main character, Lucas McCain. The model of the gun, a Winchester 92, was not actually produced until 1892, a decade after the show's setting in the 1880s. Another inconsistency is found in McCain's wardrobe. He is often seen wearing denim jeans with a W stitched on the pocket. However, this detail is not in line with the fashion of the 1880s. In that era, denim jeans were not commonly worn, and the W stitching is a feature that did not become popular until much later. These discrepancies, while noticeable to those familiar with the time period, do not detract from the overall enjoyment of the show for most viewers. The Rifleman remains a classic example of 1950s television westerns, with its compelling storylines and memorable characters. <laughs> Chuck Connors, the star of the popular 1950s TV series The Rifleman, had a notable career in professional baseball before turning to acting. Connors, who played the role of Lucas McCain, earned his nickname Chuck on the baseball field. His love for the sport was so great that he couldn't resist incorporating it into his acting career. In the episode titled The Retired Gun, The Rifleman featured another professional baseball player, Duke Snyder. The episode showcased the camaraderie between Connors and Snyder, both of whom shared a passion for the sport. It was a treat for baseball fans who got to see their favorite stars in action, even if it was in a different setting. Chuck Connors' baseball career was a significant part of his life, and it was only natural for him to bring that passion to his acting career. His nickname, Chuck, was a testament to his prowess on the baseball field, and it was a name that stuck with him throughout his life. In The Rifleman, Connors was able to combine his love for acting and baseball, creating a memorable character that fans still cherish today. The show was a classic example of how an actor's real-life experiences can add depth and authenticity to their on-screen performances. The inclusion of Duke Snyder in The Retired Gun was a nod to Connors' baseball background and a treat for fans of the sport. It was a rare opportunity to see two professional baseball players in a different setting 
showcasing their talent and charisma in a new light. In the end, Chuck Connors' baseball career was an essential part of his identity, both on and off the screen. His love for the sport shone through in The Rifleman, making the show all the more endearing to fans. I'll get my saddle gloves and what would that blanket or like? No, no, I can't let you do that, Mark. Your father would let you. In the original pilot of The Rifleman, the main character, played by Chuck Connors, was named John McCain, not Lucas McCain, and he did not have a son. However, the producers decided to make McCain a widower with a son. Initially, Connors turned down the role due to a low salary offer. The producers considered other actors, but ultimately offered Connors a higher salary, which he accepted. Thus, the iconic father-son duo of Lucas and Mark McCain was born, becoming a staple of 1950s television. This classic series, The Rifleman, is a testament to the power of a compelling narrative and the undeniable charm of Chuck Connors. Johnny got a gun when he was 10, Mr. Like most mountain boys, and along with that gun, the Lord... In the popular 1958 TV series, The Rifleman, the main character, Lucas McCain, showcased an impressive skill with his rifle. He was able to handle and fire it with equal precision from both his right and left hands, making him a formidable and unique figure in the world of television westerns. This classic show gained international popularity and was one of the few American TV series allowed to air on Soviet television. In fact, Soviet premier Brezhnev was a devoted fan of The Rifleman. After meeting Chuck Connors, the actor who played Lucas McCain at a party hosted by President Nixon, Brezhnev established a long-time friendship with him. The ambidextrous rifle handling in The Rifleman was just one of the many aspects that made this show stand out. Its ability to transcend cultural boundaries and resonate with audiences around the world is a testament to its enduring appeal. Even today, this classic series continues to captivate viewers with its intriguing storylines and memorable characters. Setting the house on fire. I'm glad we can cross that off. Lucas. The groundbreaking 1958 TV series, The Rifleman, explored the theme of single parenthood in a way that was unprecedented for its time. The show's protagonist, Lucas McCain, was a widowed father raising his son, Mark, alone. McCain's wife had passed away due to smallpox, and throughout the series, he never remarried. In the early stages of the third season, a new character was introduced, Millie Scott, the owner of the general store. Played by Joan Taylor, Millie's relationship with McCain began as one of conflict, but gradually evolved into mutual affection. The Rifleman was revolutionary in its portrayal of single parenthood, as it depicted a father grappling with the challenges of raising a child without a part. Despite considering remarriage, McCain ultimately chose to remain single, dedicating himself to his son's upbringing. The introduction of Millie Scott added a new dimension to the show. Initially, their relationship was strained, but as the season progressed, the two developed a deep bond. The evolution of their relationship was a significant aspect of the series, providing a nuanced portrayal of romantic interests in the context of single parenthood. In summary, The Rifleman was a pioneering TV series that tackled the theme of single parenthood, offering a unique perspective on the challenges faced by widowed parents. The introduction of Millie Scott added a romantic interest to the storyline, further enriching the series' narrative. You know, poet. Yeah. Joan Taylor, an actress who starred in The Rifleman, had an interesting film career. Before her role in the TV series, she played a significant part in the 1956 film Girls in Prison. In this film, Joan's character, Karen, gets into a catfight with another inmate, Helen Gilbert, as depicted in the theatrical poster. This poster became a prize collector's item, even though the actual scene of the catfight did not appear in the movie. The depicted scene, however, showcases Joan's ability to portray strong, and dynamic characters even in challenging situations. Joan's career in the film industry began in the 1950s and she quickly became a familiar face in various film and television productions. Her role in The Rifleman as Lou Mallory, Lucas McCain's love interest, further solidified her status as a talented actress. Throughout her career, Joan Taylor demonstrated her versatility and range as an actress, taking on diverse roles in different genres. Her contributions to the film industry remain an essential part of its history, and fans of The Rifleman and other classic films continue to appreciate her work. Just remember it. The Rifleman, a TV series that first aired in 1958, quickly became a favorite among viewers due to its unique storyline 
and captivating performances. Set in the American West, it follows the life of Lucas McCain, a widowed veteran who tries to raise his son while dealing with various challenges. The show was well received by audiences and critics alike, praised for its high production values and engaging stories. One aspect that set The Rifleman apart from other Western shows of the era was its focus on character development and family relationships. While action sequences were plentiful, the heart of each episode lay in the interactions between Lucas and his son Mark. This approach resonated with viewers, making the show a hit and solidifying its place in television history. The popularity of The Rifleman led to several spin-offs, merchandise, and adaptations over the years. Spin-off series like The Deputy featured actors from The Rifleman, capitalizing on the original show's success. Additionally, fans could purchase toys, clothing, and other memorabilia bearing images and logos from their beloved program. In recent years, digital streaming platforms have made episodes of The Rifleman accessible to new generations, allowing them to discover the charm of this classic show. Moreover, The Rifleman has had a lasting influence on pop culture, inspiring numerous films, books, and even video games. Its themes and characters continue to inspire creators today, demonstrating the timeless appeal of strong narratives centered around family dynamics and personal growth. Ultimately, the legacy of The Rifleman extends far beyond its initial run, leaving an indelible mark on both television and broader popular culture. Lucas McCain put on for a couple of days. Just got in town yesterday. You won't be getting much work out of that one. Chuck Connors, playing the lead role of Lucas McCain, was a natural choice due to his background in both baseball and acting. His athleticism and charisma made him stand out during auditions. Connors' ability to convincingly portray a widowed veteran raising a son on his own sealed the deal. Johnny Crawford, who played Mark McCain, Lucas' young son, was discovered by the show's producers while attending a Hollywood dance studio. At just 13 years old, Crawford displayed maturity beyond his age and had prior experience performing in Western productions like The Man Who Shot Liberty Valance. Paul Fix, cast as Marshal Micah Torrance, already had established relationships with both Connors and the show's creator, Sam Peckinpah. They first met when Fix directed Connors in a play called Mr. Roberts and later worked together on Peckinpah's directorial debut, The Deadly Companions. This existing rapport facilitated Fix's addition to the cast. For the part of Lou Mulloy, the town saloon owner, Patricia Blair initially tested opposite Connors, but did not get along with him off screen. As a result, Joanna Cookmore stepped in to fill the role. Her warm demeanor provided a stark contrast to her character's tough exterior, making her perfect for the part. Finally, Joe Higgins joined the cast as Sweeney, another local businessman. Initially hired as a stuntman, he demonstrated exceptional skills and screen presence, leading to his promotion to recurring character status. These actors formed the core ensemble of The Rifleman, creating memorable performances week after week throughout its five-season run. How do you know? I know, and I know just how you feel about him. The Rifleman, a popular 1950s TV series, was brought to life by director Arthur Hiller. Known for his ability to create compelling stories, Hiller focused on the relationship between Lucas McCain, the show's main character, and his son Mark. Hiller's approach was simple yet effective. He wanted to highlight the love and protection a father has for his child, all while navigating the challenges of the Old West. This vision was influenced by his own experiences as a father and his love for Westerns. The director's style was characterized by his use of close-ups to capture the emotions of the characters. He believed that the audience should be able to see the thoughts and feelings of the actors, making the story more relatable. Collaboration was key to the success of The Rifleman. Hiller worked closely with the cast and crew, encouraging their input and ideas. He believed that a successful production was a team effort and that everyone's contributions were valuable. Chuck Connors, who played Lucas McCain, was a particular favorite of Hiller's. The two men developed a strong working relationship, with Hiller guiding Connors in his portrayal of the iconic character. Hiller's direction was not just limited to the actors. He also worked closely with the show's writers, ensuring that the stories were engaging and true to his vision. He was known for his attention to detail, making sure that every scene was shot with precision and care. The Rifleman's success can be attributed to Hiller's directorial vision and his ability to bring the story to life. His influence can still be seen in modern television with his style and approach continuing to inspire directors today. It wasn't me. It wasn't me. You've got to believe me. Eli! Is that you, Cousin Eli? 
Yeah, Stacy. The Rifleman, a popular TV series that aired from 1958 to 1963, was known for its compelling storytelling and unique production elements. Set in the late 1800s, the show revolved around Lucas McCain, a widowed farmer and skilled marksman who faced various challenges while raising his son Mark. The production team paid great attention to detail when creating the set design and choosing filming locations. The primary shooting location for the Rifleman was the Iverson Movie Ranch in Chatsworth, California. This iconic site served as the backdrop for many Western productions due to its diverse landscapes, including vast desert expanses and towering rock formations. However, filming on location presented several logistical challenges. For instance, transporting equipment and cast members across rough terrains required careful planning and coordination. Additionally, weather conditions could abruptly change, forcing delays or alterations in the shooting schedule. To overcome these obstacles, producers adopted innovative solutions such as constructing temporary sets near parking areas to minimize transportation time and effort. They also utilized lighter weight materials for building props and scenery, enabling crew members to easily move them if necessary. Furthermore, they closely monitored weather forecasts to optimize their scheduling decisions. Another notable aspect of the Rifleman's production involved groundbreaking camera technology. To capture action scenes more effectively, the production team used Technorama, a widescreen format offering higher resolution than conventional methods. By combining this technique with meticulously designed sets and picturesque outdoor locales, the visual impact of each episode was significantly enhanced. Despite potential difficulties inherent in filming on location, the makers of The Rifleman managed to create a captivating television series. Their commitment to utilizing advanced technologies and creative problem solving resulted in a high quality product enjoyed by millions of viewers worldwide. The, last year, two the Rifleman, a popular 1958 TV series, owes much of its emotional depth to its musical score and soundtrack. The composers and musicians involved in creating this music played a crucial role in enhancing the narrative and setting the tone for each episode. Herschel Burke Gilbert, the primary composer for The Rifleman, was known for his ability to create music that perfectly complemented the action on screen. His scores were often filled with tension and drama, mirroring the challenges faced by the show's main character, Lucas McCain. The main theme of The Rifleman, a haunting melody played on a solo guitar, became instantly recognizable to audiences. This theme set the stage for the show's western setting and its focus on the relationship between McCain and his son Mark. In addition to the main theme, Gilbert composed a variety of other pieces for the show. These included action cues, dramatic scores, and emotional melodies that heightened the impact of each scene. The music was often used to build tension, create a sense of foreboding, or provide a release of emotion. The musicians who performed the music for the Rifleman were also integral to its success. Many of them were session players who had worked on other popular TV shows and films. Their skill and experience allowed them to bring Gilbert's compositions to life, adding depth and richness to the music. The Rifleman's musical score and soundtrack were not just background noise. They were an essential part of the show's storytelling, helping to create a vivid and immersive world for audiences. The music was carefully crafted to enhance the narrative, providing a soundtrack that resonated with viewers and deepened their connection to the characters and the story. In the end, the music of The Rifleman was a testament to the power of collaboration. It was the result of a partnership between composers, musicians, and producers, all working together to create something truly special. The music of The Rifleman will forever be remembered as an integral part of this classic TV series. You heard me. You don't apologize, I'll have to ask satisfaction. I'm waiting. In the second episode of The Rifleman, titled The Marshal's Boy, a powerful scene unfolds as Lucas McCain, played by Chuck Connors, teaches his young son, Mark, how to handle a rifle. The scene is a testament to the show's focus on the relationship between a father and son, set against the backdrop of the American frontier. Director Joseph H. Lewis masterfully frames this moment, capturing the tender exchange between Lucas and Mark. The camera work is intimate, with close-ups of Connor's face as he imparts his wisdom. Connor's performance is noteworthy. He strikes a balance between sternness and warmth, emphasizing the importance of responsibility and safety. Cinematographer Frank Redman enhances the scene with strategic use of lighting and shadows. 
The natural light streaming in through the window casts a soft glow on the characters, adding a sense of serenity. The shadows, meanwhile, create a visual metaphor for the dangers that lurk in the world outside their home. This scene had a profound impact on the audience, resonating with viewers who appreciated the show's nuanced portrayal of fatherhood. Connors himself recognized the significance of this scene, stating in an interview, it was a moment that encapsulated the essence of The Rifleman, a show about a man's love for his son, his commitment to protecting him, and the lessons he teaches him along the way. The scene's direction, performance, and cinematography all contribute to its iconic status. It's a powerful example of how The Rifleman used its Western setting to explore universal themes, leaving a lasting mark on television history. Hey, what is it you have to say, mister? Call you The Rifleman, don't they? You don't look like... The Rifleman, a 1958 TV series, left a significant cultural and social impact. The show followed the story of Lucas McCain, a widowed Civil War veteran, and his son Mark, living in North Fork, New Mexico. It quickly resonated with audiences due to its unique blend of family drama, Western action, and morality lessons. The series was one of the first to portray a single father raising a child, which was a novel concept at the time. Lucas McCain's character was a strong, yet tender-hearted father figure, which many viewers found relatable and inspiring. The relationship between Lucas and Mark was a central theme, often depicting the challenges and joys of parenthood. The Rifleman also contributed to discussions on relevant social themes. For instance, it tackled issues like gun responsibility and the use of force. Lucas McCain was a skilled marksman, but he only used his rifle in defense, promoting a responsible attitude towards gun ownership. Moreover, the show influenced pop culture in various ways. The iconic Winchester model 1892 rifle, prominently featured in the series, became known as the Rifleman's Rifle. The show's theme music, composed by Herschel Burke Gilbert, also gained popularity and is still recognized today. In terms of cultural impact, The Rifleman introduced a more complex and nuanced portrayal of the American West. It moved away from the stereotypical black and white morality of earlier Westerns, instead presenting a grayer, more realistic picture. This shift influenced future Western TV shows and movies, helping to shape the genre as we know it today. In conclusion, The Rifleman resonated with audiences through its compelling storytelling, relatable characters, and relevant themes. It influenced pop culture and contributed to discussions on social issues, leaving a lasting impact on the television landscape. Just until he gets here, see, and then when I see him, I'll, I'll tell him the truth. The Rifleman, a 1958 TV series, received positive reviews from critics and audiences alike. The show's unique storytelling and strong lead performances were praised. Chuck Connors, who played Lucas McCain, was highly appreciated for his portrayal of a widowed Civil War veteran trying to raise his son in a tough frontier town. The series was also recognized with several award nominations. In 1959, it was nominated for two Primetime Emmy Awards Chuck Connors for Best Actor in a Leading Role, and the show itself for Best Western Series. Although it didn't win either category, the nominations highlighted the show's quality and popularity. The Rifleman also resonated with audiences, becoming one of the top-rated shows during its initial run. Its blend of family drama and Western action was a hit with viewers, contributing to its five-season run from 1958 to 1963. These accolades not only validated the hard work of the cast and crew, but also solidified the Rifleman's place in television history. The show's enduring popularity, evident through syndication and streaming services, is a testament to its timeless appeal. And what's more, I knew that all I'd get for my trouble was another good larrikin. Did you? Huh? Did you? The Rifleman, a popular 1958 TV series, had its fair share of memorable moments during production. Chuck Connors, who played the lead role of Lucas McCain, was known for his strong work ethic. He often arrived early and stayed late to ensure each scene was perfect. Connors even learned how to handle a rifle properly for the show, which added authenticity to his performance. Behind the scenes, the young actor Johnny Crawford, who played Mark McCain, was full of energy and mischief. He would often play pranks on the crew, keeping the set lively. Crawford's pranks were a welcome distraction from the long hours and hard work that went into making each episode. The show's creator, Sam Peckinpah, was a demanding director who pushed his cast and crew to their limits. Despite his tough exterior, Peckinpah had a soft spot for animals and insisted on using real horses in the show rather than animatronics or CGI. 
This often led to unexpected and challenging situations, but it added a level of realism that viewers appreciated. The Rifleman's iconic theme music was composed by Herschel Burke Gilbert. The catchy tune became instantly recognizable and added to the show's appeal. Interestingly, the theme was originally written for a different TV series, but when that show was canceled, Gilbert repurposed the music for The Rifleman. Despite the challenges and long hours, the cast and crew of The Rifleman formed a close-knit community. They supported each other through the ups and downs of production, creating a bond that lasted long after the show ended. The Rifleman's legacy continues to resonate with audiences today, a testament to the enduring power of good storytelling and strong performances. To make any fire was forbidden to him. Then he is not guilty. When he has... The Rifleman, a 1958 TV series, holds a significant place in film history. It introduced a unique father-son dynamic, with Lucas McCain, played by Chuck Connors, using his sharpshooting skills to maintain law and order in North Fork, aided by his son, Mark. This innovative storytelling approach influenced future filmmaking, inspiring the creation of family-centric action series. The show's impact can be seen in various subsequent works. For instance, the popular 1980s series, The A-Team, featured a similar dynamic, with the team's leader, Hannibal, using his military expertise to solve problems, guided by a strong sense of camaraderie. The Rifleman's influence also extended to the big screen, with films like Lethal Weapon and Die Hard featuring strong father-son or mentor-mentee relationships. The Rifleman's legacy resonates in the way it tackled complex issues within the context of a family-oriented show. It addressed themes such as loyalty, responsibility, and the moral implications of violence, all while maintaining a balance between action and drama. These themes have since been explored in numerous films and TV series, demonstrating the show's enduring impact on the film industry. McCain, now you turn me in, it'll be too late. Did you know that The Rifleman first hit TV screens in 1958? This classic Western series captured audiences' hearts with its unique father-son storyline and thrilling adventures. If you have fond memories of watching this show, we would love to hear about it. Share your favorite moments, characters, or lessons learned from The Rifleman. Perhaps Lucas McCain's unforgettable lever-action rifle made a lasting impression on you. Or maybe young Mark McCain's coming-of-age journey resonated with you. Whatever drew you into the series, let us know in the comments below. We invite you to like, share, and subscribe to our channel for more engaging discussions on timeless films and shows that shaped cinema history. Your support helps us continue sharing stories worth remembering together. Looking forward to hearing about your personal connection to The Rifleman. The years have been kind to you. They spared me nothing, Norman.